Money is pouring into legal online sports betting. Fantasy sports site DraftKings, which lets users bet on actual professional and college sports, is getting another $300 million round of funding. The latest round is being led by Fox Networks Group. Both DraftKings and its main rival FanDuel are now valued at more than a billion dollars apiece. So just how much are people spending on fantasy sports? According to the Fantasy Sports Trade Association, who knew there was such a thing? In the last year, the average fantasy player spent roughly $465, compared to just $95 a couple years ago. Adam Krajic is Managing Director of Digital and Interactive Gaming at Eilers Research Firm, and he joins us now. Adam, welcome. Good to have you with us. Do, do either of these dominant players, DraftKings or FanDuel, make any money? And if not, why not? Yeah, hi. Thanks for uh, having me on. Um, right now, neither FanDuel or DraftKings are profitable, um, but they are experiencing uh, tremendous uh, revenue and top-line growth. So at this point, what kind of percentage of user do they have? In other words, how big is their quote-unquote audience? Is it, is it a large percentage of people that are using it, or is there a lot of room for growth there? Sure. So the daily market is fairly um, nascent right now. Um, there's obviously a lot of sports fans in the U.S. Um, and then in terms of traditional or season-long fantasy, um, the, the Sports Trade Association has that at over 50 million um, season-long players. Mm -hmm. But in the daily space last year, um, at its peak, there was just around 1.5 million unique um, daily players. So on that basis, you know, we're, we're still very early innings in terms of the user base and, uh, and the market opportunity. So, so they don't make any money. How would they propose that they will make money when they start to make money? And where's, the, where's all this revenue going? Sure. So the, the biggest cost and expense for, for these, the major players is customer acquisition. And they're spending very aggressively um, right now to acquire, play, uh, acquire players and users. It's essentially a land grab. And they're spending more on, on the customer acquisition side than they're obviously bringing advertising. in on, on advertising. Yes, advertising, exactly. So the biggest winners, truthfully, right now, present day, are the, the media companies, the ESPNs, the Fox um, of the world. But that being said, the ind individual lifetime value of the players, the players itself, if they were to cut advertising today, um, FanDuel would certainly be profitable, and DraftKings very likely would be as well this year. So it's really... It's, it's on the advertising spend that uh, mm -hmm. is causing the, uh, the, uh, the cash burn. What about the regulatory issues, if there are any? I mean, some people liken it to gambling. Other people say it's, it's harmless. It's just fun. Sure. So it's a, it's a complex um, and highly contentious issue right now. Um, we would say, you know, the, the positives that this industry has going for it right now is, is some of the strategic investors um, that are, you know, have participated in this latest round. For example, Fox. Um, into, uh, into DraftKings. You had uh, Turner and Google into FanDuel. And so you've had major media corporations as well as the sports leagues themselves. The NBA is an investor in FanDuel. MLB is an investor in, uh, in DraftKings. And to have their support, we think, is a real big vote of confidence and endorsement, not to say that mm -hmm. there won't be re regulatory risks or challenges, right. but certainly we feel better um, having the support of some of these major entities and, and powerful uh, allies. All righty. We'll see how it all plays out, as the saying goes. Adam Krajic with Eilers Research. Thank you very much.